Good morning, everybody. We're a little bit late this morning. This is uh, Sean, and that is Tyler with Rendered Reality. We're coming to you through our brand new coffee shop. We are officially <laughs> we are officially in a I coffee can. shop. We are, that's I for can. sure. So we got fresh brewed coffee all day long, and uh, yeah, we do. come right yep. up to the so, counter and get you some coffee. There's some, uh, yeah, there's some VR headsets over behind you guys. You know, you can go try if you want to. Uh, pull a <laughs> Sebastian, I guess, maybe. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe. maybe we're starting a coffee shop with VR, I guess. There you I go, there you go. So <laughs> what all are we getting into today? We got a bunch of stuff, so... Yeah, so we actually have uh, a bunch of stuff for the Quest today, too, which is crazy. A bunch of new products and stuff that kind of got dropped. Um, one which I've got sitting right in front of me, too, to show off. Um, I know we're going to talk a little bit about our No Man's Sky hack. Uh, I know we'll oh, get yeah. into that, I'm sure. Yeah, um, Yeah. some of the stuff has been going on, like Jason Rubin, uh, some new games that came out, a bunch of stuff. You know, the couple, normal. A couple of random games that are coming out that yep, we've uh, kind of looked a little bit interesting, a couple of different things. Some Definitely some new tech stuff that's uh, coming out, too. Some Kickstarters and stuff going on that are pretty pretty VR interesting concert? things. I'm all about oh, yeah, yeah, concert, yeah, man. for sure. Ooh, yeah. That is Good coming stuff. up, too. That is not far away. That is August no. 26th. That's like, what, two days from now or something? I think that's Monday. Yeah. Something like so that. I'm a- so can I get into that? Or am I allowed to right away? You sure. Care? Sure. Sure. Okay, I'm a super Lindsay Sterling fan. Like, I, she's great. Um, she edges into like you know the electronic kind of uh, music style a little bit. Um, she's been doing that for years, and she's she really just kind of bridges that gap for people you know that don't feel like they want to listen to that kind of music, uh, and just she just does all kinds of stuff that people like her aren't doing you know which is it's great yeah um so for somebody like her to be in vr you know is again you know pushing the limits of you know music genre and technical genre uh, and drawing people in and i think that's just so awesome she, she actually got excited. her start what, in like america's got talent or something like that it was one of those shows that she uh, originally got her start and she didn't like win the show but that was where uh, yeah, she kind of started to get some of her fame but She's awesome. I like. I really like watching her. Uh, I've watched a bunch oh, of yeah. her stuff on YouTube. Super talented. But so she's actually going to be in the wave, and this is a VR app. Uh, I believe it's on the Steam Store and the Oculus Store. I don't think it's available on Quest yet. I don't know if it's coming to Quest or whatever. But but bad. I haven't seen it on Quest because it would be cool on Quest. But, yeah, it would. Yeah. So this is going to be her performing live inside of the wave so if you've been in the wave before i don't believe it's going to be like the venues how you have it's like an actual footage it's like a rendered world inside where she will be you know some sort of tracked avatar i would imagine and it'll be a live performance of that i think that's gonna be awesome i'm really looking forward to that that's really i do too i know i got i didn't look i wasn't lucky enough to hit the jack black day uh when he was on and I so wish I would have got to see that. But I know you guys had troubles with that a little bit. Um, I guess what? How they showed it in the first half? Yeah, there was like a, sc- a curtain and... over the yeah. thing. People were saying it was like a dual screen door effect. It was really weird. I don't know why they did. But, I mean, it was still cool. It was still cool to have to get these oh, live sure. experiences. So, But this is yep. at 12 p.m. Pacific. So that's going to be a weird, kind of a weird True. Wait, time for that- us. That's in the oh, daytime. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that is. Hopefully right. you can play this back. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to play this back if you don't catch it live, hopefully. So wait, does it? GMT. Oh, I guess maybe it is. Yeah. 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 So yeah. kind of a weird time, but yeah. yeah. And well, weird for us, not for everybody. Yeah, not for everybody. Come on but, now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I think it's really cool though. I'm really looking forward it to it. It is. That's I awesome. I just that like out. what she does and stuff. So just to be yeah. put into VR and stuff. For sure. Um, yeah, I mean it's just something different. Um Oh man, I was going to tell you about, so there's the, the actor and I can't think of his name off the top of my head. I thought I had it pulled up. Um, the, the guy, the kid from, uh, the Kingsman. Did you ever see that movie? Uh, I think I've seen pieces and parts of it. I don't know if I ever saw that whole movie or not, which it was a super, super good movie. Like it was a, a little different. Them, it was, yeah, I think they did. They actually yeah. did make a couple. Um, yeah, I don't see it up right now, but he, uh, I forget his name. Darn it. But he is actually going to star in a VR movie that is going to feature at one of the film festivals, which I think is awesome because he's a, you know, bigger actor and stuff signing up for a VR movie. So is this maybe going to be, you know, the path of like maybe some actors coming over? I mean, I think they're starting to be a little bit of a shift. I mean, even like we saw with the Lion King and everything else, you know, they're utilizing VR to make these movies, you know, it's definitely a shift towards VR. I think that we're starting to see the, the big, the big name people and stuff are finally starting to pick up on it a little bit. I think like Hollywood yeah. is a little bit starting to pick up on it. And we know yep, there are yep. some, some big name 
uh, Hollywood people that are actually into VR as well that actually do enjoy VR on a, you know, on a private basis in their own home. But sure. It is pretty cool. Yeah, but not, I mean, for an actor and stuff, you know, to come on board and he probably saw some of this in VR, I'm sure, because how can you pitch this to somebody without showing it? And he had to have liked it, you know, and had right. to have thought this is great, you know? Um, and I think it says something about playing like a musical panda or something like that. So it's going to be very like, and turns into something. So right. it'll be definitely different, which I think is really cool. Um, but Taren, yeah, I mean, not uh, Taryn Egerton. Egerton. Yeah. That's okay, it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So Steve Drumheller yep. helped us out with that. <laughs> yep. That's it. Yeah. Which I think that's awesome. I mean, the more, you know, people, and it's going to start small. I mean, you're not going to get your, you know, big name actors in that kind of stuff right yeah. away. It's too risky. They probably would think, but, and it's going to be shown in an indie film festival, you know, and all that. So, right. you know, and, but uh, I think it's great. I'm super excited about it, you know, just to see this progression in VR into the mainstream right, right now, you know, in the it last like six months is just, I feel like this cool. year, 2019 has been pretty big for for VR. I feel like this is finally the year things are really starting to pick up. You know, we got the Quest, you know, which has helped to grow some VR to some people that didn't have the gaming PCs and all that stuff. But I feel like just in general, it's really starting to pick up steam. And I think I'm super excited to see the holidays come. Yeah, I know. I really want to yeah. see what happens. It will be know? really interesting to see Christmas, Thanksgiving, Black Friday time this year and see what we see have what, one big breakaway could you imagine like game yeah. come out right at the holiday like at the holiday release so like november yeah and then everyone wants it for christmas and you can't buy it which drives sales up even more you know it's a whole you know thing for them right yeah but i mean and it's just, i mean I even hope. just the sales you know is oculus gonna put uh the yep. quest the you know the rift s all that stuff is there gonna be some sales for the holidays uh, which hopefully they will be i don't know because it's still pretty new i don't know but i think yeah. they will i mean they they, they knock 50 typically, bucks off usually yeah yeah. For I holidays. mean, if they did 50 bucks, that would be a big deal. The only problem is sure. with the Quest, you still can't barely get them. Like, usually looking at Best right. Buy, they're still not on the shelves usually at Best Buy. So, See, if they're smart, they're just saving up their inventory for holidays. Like, yeah. make it scarce right now. Make people want it. Build, you know, drive that, you drive know, demand up. Yeah, and then, true. like, drop them, like, right at holiday where people can buy them, you know? Yeah. I mean, you never know. They might be. Right. But, yeah. I don't unfortunately, know. I'm just for it. unfortunately, Fluke Rogi said uh, they said it's live only. So I think the Lindsey Sterling thing is going to be live only. There might mm. not be any playback. So Dang it. yeah, so that'll be a bummer if we don't get to see it live. I really want to see that. So somebody oh record gosh, it. Go in there and record it so we can at least. Uh, That's see true. It, but yeah. yeah. I wonder if there's like copyright. Yeah, I guess there wouldn't be copyright stuff against. I mean, that. for her music, probably if you're putting it out on YouTube, there probably is. But true. Ah, it yeah. sucks. Man, I don't want to watch it. That's how yeah. it goes, though. Yeah. Can't yeah. be awake for all of them. Can't join us live for coffee. You yeah, know what I mean? That's, that's right. That's hard. right. We got some yep. people up pretty early this morning, though. We got a bunch of people in here. Steve Drumheller, Limba, Limba Zero, Gamertag VR, T-Dub, the VR Mang. Uh, I know. Jim Jason, Hall is here. Jason. Jason Uno. I can't yeah. believe he's up. He's always up late, usually. Oliver Chapel, Colin Webb saying hi. So we got a bunch of people up uh, bright and early with us this morning. Awesome. I don't know yeah. where you're from, you know, what time zone, and it can be pretty early. Yeah. We were actually Cheers, guys. We were actually a little bit late starting this morning. We were having a couple technical difficulties, and uh, Tyler overslept a little bit. So <laughs> seems to be the theme lately. But <laughs> can't help it. And I was out late. <laughs> nah, it's all good. It is all good. I know so, me and PD, uh, me and Paradise Decay went out last out night. I just, I just got back on the red eye, man. Yeah. yeah it was good stuff. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually did get some of your, uh, quest stuff in from VR cover and mine was actually supposed to be I here did. yesterday. It hasn't showed up yet. So we talked about that this a little bit last week about the new slim VR cover. And, uh, yeah. this is basically an add on for your quest instead of using the, the thicker cover, which is going to give you a little bit more field of view and all that kind of stuff. I don't even think you've had time to test them out yet, but you have it's, you got it's still hands in the on. bag. I haven't even opened it. Open like, it up. I, I legit haven't even opened yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> let's check this thing out. Let's see how much thinner. I know so, some other people got their hands on them too. I know uh, Paradise Decay. I know Gamertag VR's got a set of them man, too. So man, this is thin. Is it? This is okay. So here's the here's the original one. Okay, I just pulled it off my my Quest. I'll just show you the thickness difference. Yeah, it's. It's big time, big time difference. It's gonna be really hard to see on here, I'm sure. Yeah. But oh, you can, you it's can definitely see, noticeable, yeah. Yeah, it's a big difference in thickness. Yeah, for sure. So, so just that thickness, I mean, it'll gain you, you know, just like we always said, field of view, right there. Yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, it definitely will. And you know what? It may not bunch up as much because when this thing bends, it does kind of bunch up and crease a little bit. Yeah. So this may be even a little more comfortable. I mean, the, the one yeah. thing, the regular oh. one is pretty thick. I mean, it, it is comfortable. You know, it's got a lot of it padding is. to it, but 
But yeah, yep. it's so is it the same material? It's the exact same material, right? Between yep. the two, same it's just, material, just thinner. Yep. Yep. I'd say maybe the same thing inside. Yep. Same on the back. Looks identical. Same shape. Yeah. Same so everything. pretty much yep. same thing. Just. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. And they also have another new product that I'm actually going to run into some troubles with because I have the deluxe audio strap on my Quest. So they came out with a new product that basically for the back strap that goes on the back of your head, they've added padding. Uh, It's basically a VR cover for the back strap of the Quest. Yeah, so it'll wrap around. And that that should help with comfort quite a bit too. And is that thing, does that have any heft heft to it? Like is it it heavy at all? Well, let's... I was just curious off. about counterweight aspect. Like, is there, is it heavy enough? Do you think to add any kind of counterweight or, um, it's probably not very heavy, but like, yeah, I don't it's know not it's, heavy. Yeah. There's nothing to it. It yeah, feels like figure. basically just feels like the padding that you get with the, uh, the regular headsets. Yeah. But, but it yeah, should add some comfort. It's really Ooh. nice though. Yeah. So it, it wraps around the, the back triangle piece in the back and there is Velcro that wraps around and attaches it. It's so hard to see on here, but would wrap around and just grabs it basically. But yeah, it just adds more cushion and stuff to it. Yeah. So I could imagine with this and like the thick padded one, I mean, talk about long time playability, you know, it, it definitely would help. Now it doesn't take, you know, yeah, more probably, weight some off. Of the, it doesn't transfer anything like that. Right. So. I wonder if those two things combined on the quest with somewhat of a counterweight on the back, you know, how much that would really help because I'm using the the Lux audio strap on my quest, which I really love, but now I'm tempted to go back to the old strap because I want to check this out. And I kind of want to see how the two compare, you know what I mean? Comfort wise. Is it, is it still a lot more comfortable with the Lux audio strap or are they pretty similar? Because I've also considered putting a deluxe audio strap onto my Rift S to to test that out. Me and Greg's VR actually talked about that a little bit on the discord. I, I know some Someone has done it. I've seen something on Reddit before where somebody did do that. And I'm curious to try that out. And if that's something that, you know, if I, if I can get my quest to be very comfortable and able to switch this over to the Rift S, you know, I, I just, I don't really want to buy another right. one at this point in time. So I'm curious to see, but, but we will get some more, uh, some time with these things and stuff. And we'll let you know probably next week or whatever of how they're comfort wise, you know, how these things like are. Oculus hasn't released like any, yeah peripherals you know accessories since the release yeah, actually you know what I mean? they have a headphones. page even that yeah. they drop what like two things on initially and then that was it i mean they are literally giving htc money they are giving right. them money because so many people are doing the deluxe audio strap mod i mean I that it's money out of their pocket i don't know why they have and the same thing with the mantis headphones you know that the the bionic mantis and headphones even if same it thing. costs more people are going to buy it even if it was 199 or something for 150 people are going to buy it because of the ease of it because yeah. they don't need to get a printed part for they don't have to make stuff buy or velcro screw with it. or find yeah, a d-ring it looks, or I mean, anything it's factory you know it looks good too yeah. usually so people would buy it so why wouldn't they sell that yeah. like i just don't and i mean hopefully they it. keep it competitive to what the deluxe audio strap is maybe even cheaper you know because obviously it'd be better if it was cheaper you know they could sell more of them if they could depending on what the cost and stuff would be but and I would even be down for them using the CV1 uh, headphones. Just don't use sure. the ribbon clip or the ribbon cable that they were using. But yeah. you could still use right. those same drivers, those speaker drivers. Sure. Yeah. I mean, they sounded great. I love those headphones. I know. So, I know. Yeah. yeah um, Roger in chat was asking if it comes with one or two slims. It actually just comes with one. I think um, that... There's all- I think the, the actual kit, kit that you order, I think the kit yes. you order online will come with two. These are, these are uh, kind of press kits that well, they send out. I believe on the I website it shows too, but I have to because look. Because I know the original set comes with two. It comes with the thick and a regular. Right. Um, I don't know if the slim does though. I don't. I don't yeah. know about I that. I don't think the back strap is available on the website yet. That it's is not coming. Yet. But the nope. slim cover, I do believe, is available. Now that you can order it. Yeah, I don't know if I threw that one into the description yet. I'll have to do that. Yeah, it should be. But, yeah. It should be in last week's. But the yeah. slim was available. Yeah, so the Slim sells for $19, and it looks like it comes with two. So the third picture okay. shows two. Well, so I do believe the Slim cover comes with two. Yeah, two cool. times PU. Yeah, so if you order the Slim cover for, for $19 on the website, that's U.S. Huh. price, it does come with two Slim covers. That's pretty cool. So, I've never, yeah. you know, for me, though, with the CV1, I've never worn out my original. 
Oh no. You know what no, I mean? Yeah. I've never I had a need forever. to like, oh, I need another one. And I, I mean, how many yeah. hours do I have on that thing? You I know? mean, it is nice in an aspect that if you, a lot of people use this, that you can have your sure. own personal one and it's easy you enough can. to swap out for when you, you know, you have parties and everything else and you got a mm-hmm. bunch of people using it. And then after that you can wipe sure. it down, you know, use some alcohol wipes or what have you, but I get it. But yeah. So, and we still don't know about the Rift S yet. They still are working on a Rift S VR cover, which I am very interested in. But, I wonder what the issue a lot is of people, with that. Yeah. I'm not sure why that's taking so long because they've come out with a couple products now for the quest and it might be that their focus is on the quest because the the quest is a a pretty popular headset so they're you know maybe sales wise they're going to sell more products for the quest right true but, but the rift yeah. s is a pretty popular headset too i mean there's a lot of people that have a rift s i don't know we obviously don't know yeah, sales numbers or anything like that but yeah yeah i know um so speaking of letting people try it i actually um played richie's plank experience for the <sighs> first time um so so a little background i am in construction myself and uh, we have a, a plumbing company and we uh, <laughs> we were at a job and there was a bunch of guys there that I'm, I'm friends with, you know, out, even outside of work. And uh, I, I put it on them and a bunch of them were like, I don't want to put that thing on. I'm scared, you know, to try something like this. <laughs> Grown men scared. Yeah, exactly. So I let them <laughs> try it on. And uh, it was the first time I tried Richie's Plank Experience, too. So I set it up and I'm like, this is awesome. And like we on the job site, instead of a two by six, we actually had a ripped down two by six that was a full length. And it was like four and a half inches. You can actually change the width of them yeah. on there down to that You can change the small. length and everything. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. So I did that and then matched it up, you know, on the ground and in the headset and stuff and let them try it. Oh, my gosh. The first guy, and what I did too, and I didn't even tell you this, about 10 inches from the end of the board, I put a little piece of wood under the board. So when they oh, got yeah. close to the end, it was like real wobbly and like, like lean forward and the board like jerked, um, <laughs> which worked perfect because oh, yeah. when they would step on the end of the board, it would like rock, you know, like a teeter totter, just like a half an inch, but it freaked them all out. Yeah. You know, the one, when uh, I did it, when I did it, I had a, a two by six, but it was warped. So sure. the whole time you're yeah. walking on it, it moved, it wasn't flat to the ground. It had some movement in it. But when yeah. I put it down, the guy was like, it wobbled like just by itself. He's like, Oh, do you want me to try and find one that's flatter or flip it over? And I'm nope. like, Oh no, like, no this, is perfect. <laughs> this is perfect. So anyways, the guy gets on it and he makes it off the elevator. Right. Oh, and he man. gets about three steps and he's like, just staring at his feet. And I'm like, his mm-hmm. name is Jeff. I'm like, Jeff, look up, just, just look up and look around, you know? And he starts freaking out and shaking on the board and stuff. And he like, he's like, Oh, I'm going back. So he turns around <laughs> and he gets, he turns around, but then he wants to put his next foot forward. And when he did that, he got all wobbly and I literally caught him yeah. falling to the ground. I like, saw the I video. It's it, hilarious. You know? We're going to oh, need to put God. together a little video of these clips because I have the one from a, a party at my sister's house. It was like my nephew's birthday party or something. I put a bunch of them and I, my mom was the funniest. <laughs> my mom was freaking out and she wouldn't even do it unless I held her arm. I had to help, hold her arm the whole time, but sure. it was so funny. So we need to get those clips put together and just do a little video thing of, uh, no. of that. But the one guy was even like, Oh look, a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> some people are like super free. And I guess it probably has something to do with like how much of your fear of heights you have, because some well, people, People sure were super like my mom was super freaked out. My like five year old nephew was like do 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 and just walked down That's the board cute, like it was man. no big deal. But I was so scared that he yeah. would fall off, so I I made sure. sure he didn't fall off the board because I didn't want him to fall in the headset and that would freak him out probably. But I mean it was no issue for him. It was like no big deal at all. But but yeah, we will get some footage up. So one thing we should probably talk about is uh, kind of your find for what you came up with for No Man's Sky. Oh sure. And your controller yeah. joystick uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. So you actually came up with a pretty ingenious idea that has uh, yeah, had some pretty good perception crazy, so far. Man. So like I love like flight sims and using the Hotas, the whole bit, you know. And for me, like the stick control, not the throttle, but just the stick was so cumbersome. Like I to fly the plane, I was getting almost frustrated some like or fly the ship, not a plane. And I was getting frustrated with it. Um, and I'm like, I just want it to be more accurate, you know. But the bad thing is, is if you have, even if I made something, you know, that you have to take your hand out of a VR controller, grab something else, like mm-hmm. that doesn't work. Even so an I'm actual like, hotest would have to do that, you know, until we have right. like hand tracking or something, right. you know what I mean? But So I thought, okay, why don't I print something, you know, on a printer and I could stick it in it and make it like rotate the same, you know, put a ball like pivot on it. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, that works, but not everybody can do that. Like that sucks too, because now you got to buy a printed part and I'm not trying to do all that. You know, I want right. something to be easy. So I just kept researching and researching like, what can I get? And I found these magnetic mounts for phones 
And I started looking at them, I'm like, man, they do rotate like side to side, but I didn't know if it was enough, you know? So I'm like, okay, I'll order one and try it. You know, what's you actually actually ordered, ordered a couple two. of them. Yeah. Yeah. I ordered two different ones um, from two different companies to, to try and see how they would work. Um, and the other one was way bigger, which worked the same, no different. It's just bigger. Um, so the steely, which is the one from the video is really small. Um, here's, here's actually the index controller sitting here and you can see it's just a little button basically on there. It looks like a little red start button for a car or something. Yeah. But I literally just put it on the front, right in front of where the charging cable goes. And it's been great. It works perfect. Yeah. I mean, I can fly like it's nothing with pinpoint accuracy. It's just that like I mean, one-to-one aspect. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it just, it translates. Cause I mean, when you're just flying, your hands just floating in the air. So your hands yep. kind of moving around and it just doesn't feel as natural where that, and I actually don't have mine. I, or I ordered one too and it oh, should it be here today. today yeah. Cause we have the Amazon link in the yeah, video yeah. and it should be the video yep. before this one. It was just the other day that uh, we put that out there. And yeah, so mine's coming in, so I can't wait to set this up. And we had a lot of people asking about the touch controllers and we came yep. up with a couple of different ways that we thought would work for the touch controllers. And that was one of the reasons I, I wanted to get it in. I was hoping before the show, but it didn't come in yet to, to try a couple of different ideas that we had. And actually someone on Reddit that had saw our video came up with an idea where he basically, because part of the problem is it doesn't have that flat edge like the index controller. And this is right. a Rift S controller. And Basically, you have your your battery cover as well. So what he did was he actually put it on. Let me see. It would have been the other side. Right. So he put it on the inside, not on the battery cover. He put the button there and then mounted yep. it kind of to the side of his armchair and so that he could just snap it on there. And I have a little clip here. I was going to say, I thought you had a picture or something. You had the video from it. Yeah. Yeah. And the other issue, too, was he said it was it was grabbing too much. It, he said it was grabbing too much, actually, like it was too strong. Oh, really? And I, I'm like, mine I'm doesn't not sure, grab I'm not sure all. if he has the same one you use, though. Is that the same one there? Because that button that, because he actually put the, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I can't tell. Maybe it's it the is. the same one. Okay, yeah, yeah, I couldn't tell, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Looks like it. Um, but he said it was too strong. So, like, for rotating. And what I told him is I said, well, just put a little oil on it. I mean, you yeah. can use anything from cooking oil to car oil. It doesn't matter. And what that does, it just gives it a little bit of lubricant layer yeah, in there. Yeah, it's just a and little bit said of friction, that great maybe. Yeah, it's yeah, probably just a little bit of friction in the in the mouth. Well, but. but what it is is you got to think the index controller is a lot taller. Yeah, so there's it's a, lot be a lot more leverage. More, yeah, that's yeah, what I was gonna say. A ton more leverage. Like mine, if I balance it straight up, it would stay there. But if I rotate it a little bit, it would fall over by itself. But I didn't have my hand right. on it, so that tells you how yeah. you know strong it actually is. Um, but he said it was too strong. But, I mean, you can see it works great. It really does. Yeah, so it works um, well for touch, too. And this is actually the one he yep. did it on was the original touch controllers, the OG yep. touch controllers, not the new yep. touch controllers. But it'll work either way. I mean, and, and you can still mount it on the top or you can mount it on the side like he did. I mean, either way, it works. And it, you know, it just helps to add. And it adds stability, too. You know, it makes your flight more stable. Even, like, somebody yep. mentioned that you can just turn the sensitivity down, which you can. And I've that does that. help. That it does yeah. help some, but it's still that one mine to was one. More, yeah, mine was more when I would grab it and I would like drift away a little bit or I would turn in my chair maybe. Then it wasn't, I don't know, for some reason, like it wasn't the tracking, but yeah. like it would crank way to the right. If I would move my physical arm away from where I grabbed it initially, right? you know, if you're holding it still and I would move to the right, then it would actually turn a little bit and it would like, it would mess all my flight up. It was just driving me crazy. And everyone said, well, just stick it on the end of the chair and rotate it, you know, but it, it not the same. I'm telling like, you, yeah, I mean, this not is not even close. The smoothness <laughs> and everything, it's just, it's definitely yep. worth I a shot. I was doing that too. I was sitting my arm, my wrist, right on the edge of yeah. the chair and rotating it, not even close to the same. Yeah, place. I mean, I think it's like 18 bucks for one of these, so it's not, it's, it's so, not expensive, you know, and it's, yeah, I mean, it, and I mean, it, there's we, no work. I mean, it's it's a meg, it's a sticky back. It's 3M. You can buy new 3M tabs for like five bucks for a right. three pack or and six we also, pack, whatever. Somebody mentioned something about well, what about that ball on the chair when you don't want it there? And they're actually you found something else, which is actually a bar mount, which mm -hmm. we talked about. Yep. You could do something like this where you actually strap it to your chair. To where yep. when you don't want it, you can take it back off. So it doesn't have to stay there all the time. Is the arm of the chair can't be super, you know, thick. That's the problem. Yeah. You know, if some of those aren't like arm chairs or office chairs have really big, you know, arms. Right. Um, I don't know how big this would go. I think it said 
I don't remember, maybe an inch and a half or something yeah. like that. And I'm sure you could swap this but strap out too. There's a, a cutout. True. You could put v- bigger Velcro or whatever you need to do. Yeah, you, you could know? just use a Velcro strap, but you need something that's going to kind of stretch though and tighten. Yeah. Because they say this, you know, even riding, you know, bicycle, motorcycle holds great. They say yeah. this is one of the best like motorcycle mounts, which vibrates all day. So it should hold in its same location. Um, you're only really pulling and prying at it though when you lift off probably. Right. Um, but yeah, it grabs really well. It doesn't grab strong. Like some guys were like, oh, it's going to grab and pull it in and I don't want that. And I'm like, no, it's not. You have to literally just set it right on it. Yeah. You know? And it comes off easy enough that, you know what I mean? It's yep. not. Yeah. Yep. So no. super fun. Like I was, it, I was super, when I tried it. Yeah. Like, you were giddy. You were like a little oh kid. You were all excited. You spiked me and I, <laughs> I'm just like, I got on. And you don't even know what I was talking about. And I'm like, dude, it works. Like, <laughs> it freaking works. Like, great. You know, it, it's, yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, yeah. that is awesome. Definitely it's worth a, a try. That's a guys, cool, it's know. a neat little hack. Yeah. It's a neat Great little no hack. Yeah. yeah, which who isn't right now? I mean, most people are playing it, but. But I mean, actually, you know, what about like um, VTOL, <laughs> like the, the flight game? You Sorry, know? I'm laughing at chat. Go ahead. Yeah, somebody did mention that, that uh, yeah. VTOL, that works great for that too. So I there are. Explain. Yeah. So there are definitely yeah. other applications this works for. So it's not just No Man's Sky that this is ex- Absolutely exclusive not. to. It's just No Man's Sky is kind of a, a pretty big hype right now. But but right. yeah, so it's a pretty cool little hack. I was. Uh, I was what were you laughing at now? No, I was just reading chat. I just. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, you can never have, Colin Webb said, you can never have enough lubricant. <laughs> you were talking, <laughs> talking about lubricating the ball. But, oh, hey. man, stop it. Awesome. <laughs> this is a family show. This is a family show here, people. <laughs> sure it is. Sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's, uh, that's awesome. awesome. Okay, so oh. let's talk a little bit about, and we talked about this before, but we hadn't played it yet, and that is the Tower 2. Yeah, I got. Yeah. I went into this last night, and I absolutely loved it. It was an awesome game, and it, it, it's a platformer game, and it's set. This is the second one. This is set in like a sci-fi cyberpunk world, but I mean, I don't even know how to explain it. it. It's. I mean, you basically are on rails. Basically, you're on this platform that moves for you, and you can push forward on the stick, and it makes you move faster. But it'll launch you into the air. It'll drop you yep. off stuff where you land on something else. There's one point in time where you come up to a, a drone that's flying. That's and awesome. the drone has a handle on it and it says, come with me if you want to live or something like that. So you get to it, you grab the drone, and the drone flies up into the air and like takes you up on top of this big. So you're literally just flying through the air, hanging onto a drone. I mean, yeah, it's cool. really cool. And, uh, I mean, there's some guns and stuff that you can pick up along your way and I haven't played a ton of it yet, but I mean, you, and you have to take out like enemy drones and stuff like that. But I mean, you're constantly like moving, you're ducking, you're going to the side to get it. Cause if you run into any of these objects, you die. So if there's an yep. obstacle that you're headed straight for, you have to stay away from that obstacle. Or like there was uh, this one part where it was basically shooting saw blades or something like that on me, at me. And I'm like almost on the ground trying to duck away from and these saw blades. Them. And, and like if you're not, when you're so into a game that you're like ducking and weaving. And it is. I mean, it, it, it was a lot of fun. Like, I mean, I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, that looks pretty interesting. You know, I like the sci-fi world stuff. It looks pretty cool. But I got into it and it was awesome. And I do have the trailer. We can show the trailer. We showed it uh, the other week. But I feel my thermos too full. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted every drop of coffee. So this horrible. is from Headroom One, and this is it here. But the the, I mean, it's kind of got like the cartoony style graphics, but it's beautiful. Oh, sure. It looks awesome in the game, and that's one of the drones that shoots like the saw blades at you. But I mean, it's it is really really cool. So if you haven't tried this yet, I definitely suggest getting in there and checking this one out because it is it is really cool. I yeah. actually don't mind like the graphics like that. Oh, I, think I it's like fun. it. Yeah. Like I don't think graphics all have to be real in VR. You know? No, graphics are a whole different thing in VR because even yep. if they're not super realistic graphics, you're inside, so it doesn't yep, matter. Absolutely. Like you're whether they're realistic or not, they're real to you because you're inside there. And so that right there is some of the stuff like, I mean, so, you literally go off the edge of that building and you have to grab that rail and slide across. And I fell so, off. I fell off a couple times. It's freaky. I, so I figured out, you know, we talked about this when we were watching, I think we watched the clip of this last week and I was trying to think of the game. Um, it's called mirror's edge. Yeah. That's what this reminds me of to a T. Yeah. Uh, which was, was super cool. I, mirror's edge was awesome. That just this kind of, rail jump run and gun kind of thing that's what it reminds me of yeah and the colors almost even except that was more red and white but just yeah, yeah it i think it's yeah it's super cool yeah it is uh definitely yeah. definitely one more check it out i haven't got to try yet i wanted to try it this morning but somebody slept in yes. so <laughs> i didn't get to <laughs> yeah 
And if you yeah, haven't you tried this yet, we do have a key for you. This is a Steam key that you can uh, check this game out. And definitely, if you get this Steam key, let us know in the comments what you think of the game because I was super impressed. I really, I can't wait to get in there some more today. And it's hard because of No Man's Sky, and that's all Tyler wants to play. So anytime you know we have time to play, it's like, oh man, let's go in No Man's Sky. Let's go hell like. It. And oh, I love the game hard, as well, man. but I still want to check out other stuff too. So it I is, know. it is, yeah. How did did our did our employees of the coffee shop put that up down here? Yeah, I think didn't you see that girl run up and plaster it on oh, the bar? No, I missed it. No, oh, yeah. I was probably getting you coffee. probably weren't paying no. attention, but yeah, we have but we have employees you know behind the scene <laughs> that pop these things up for us. <laughs> I, w- I always wanted so to ridiculous. be a what barista, right? You did. <laughs> No, you didn't. <sighs> no, I didn't. I do now, though. <laughs> I still haven't ordered that coffee maker yet, by yeah, the way. Yeah, you still got to get something uh, going I need on to. there. It's so hard to spend $300 on a coffee maker, man. Mm-hmm. It's like, those are things I need to think about. That's a lot like, of VR games. You can't just make, like, rash decisions about that. That's a lot of <laughs> VR games you can have. For real. It is. That's a lot uh-huh. of VR games. Yeah. So, or another Quest headset. Oh, just about. So VR Spry guy said, I only want to play No Man's Sky also. I'm hooked. So, And that's I the know. case with a lot of people. This is going to be a rough time to release games know. because you know it's... on uh anthony on uh vr 365 uh he was he started out in what is it creative where you just can so. build whatever you haven't even been in that i have no, i've only been in the um, whatever the regular i was in with uh reckoner vr and check his stuff out he's putting some videos out now too on his channel is he? um but yeah he is he's got i think two up i think unless he dropped one last night i didn't see but uh yeah so we were in there and i just started building whatever and before that i was playing normal so it spoiled me like i had access to everything you know where before you have to earn it and all that stuff so it it kind of ruined it for me so anthony actually started in creative and he wasn't really into it and i'm like man that's just not the way to to start no man's sky i mean i think you have to start in normal I, actually i don't really even like the game in creative I, it, yeah. it's cool if you just want to go and screw around or let someone try it or something but there's no like objective to it and you already have everything. I don't know. It, it's, it's fun to try stuff, but yeah, I, I think you Anthony did anything. go into the regular somebody. I might've been record VR that was did. telling him like, man, you got to do the actual game. You got to get in there and do that. I was telling thing. him in chat too the one day and I'm like, no man, don't yeah. do that. Like, yeah. It's almost cheating. Creative mode is almost cheating. Like you, you get to is. experience yeah. everything without having to work for it. You know what I mean? And that's, and that's honestly, I feel like the people who are like that say they maybe don't like it. Maybe they, you know, didn't try it in normal. Maybe they did go into creative. I don't know. Yeah. I'm but not sure. So we still haven't found a planet yet, by the way. No. Um, I think actually, uh, Adam on our discord, he may have found one. Uh, I forget he was in, I forget who he was with lethal. Uh, he was in with somebody. <laughs> And they were both in there, and I guess it looks really good, but there's Sentinels on it, so we'll yeah, see. I gotta get in there and check them it out. Sentinels, but. man, they're they're yeah, they can be a pain. Yeah, in but the butt. so here's a little pro tip for the Sentinels: don't you know if you're if you're mining and trying to you know get materials and and minerals and stuff, don't do it right up on the objects. Do it from like the farthest distance away. The Sentinels will actually go over to the location. They don't go to the person shooting them, so huh. you're far enough away that they don't see you. So you can kind of get away by doing that. And they don't um, just you. don't shoot the sentinels. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah, it's a good little pro tip. That's awesome. I'm so learning. <laughs> we got some coffee talk going on in chat. Good, uh, good. Nice. Rizzle Rock said coffee is life. And James it Davis, is. 911, said never liked coffee. So we, we kicked him out. Uh, we, right. we, we booted good. him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jim Hall no, said. No, honestly, I never liked coffee like a long time ago. I really didn't. I didn't either when I was two. And then I turned three. <laughs> Jim Hall said coffee comes before VR says so in the channel name which is true. I know. well see that's always my problem because I always want coffee like the moment I'm up and like yeah. we're up hours before the show prepping for it some, so, like, some of us here we go. <laughs> somebody well, we woke like up late, late this morning I know. <laughs> sort of we did show up late to the show yeah like we did way. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it's, yeah. Coffee is not for everybody, I guess. And it's yeah. not, but man, Conrad it's Lawrence definitely... says my wife says I drink swamp water. If someone told me it was coffee, <laughs> I love coffee. <laughs> I, awesome. can't, I do love coffee. I drink way too much of it sometimes, but I know yeah. I got to get it, man. I got to so, order. I should yeah, just order do. it right now. Just go ahead and do it live on the show. So T-Dub said, <laughs> thanks for the tower code. So T-Dub get, did get the code to the tower. Nice. Too. Let, let us know That's what awesome. you think, because I love the game. I, I really want to get back into that today. And uh, no, obviously, we, we started messing around with some green screen stuff, as you, as you can tell, maybe, or you really, well, for those of you that have figured out that we may not really be in a coffee shop, what? but uh, <laughs> but but that's a game that I think would be really cool I to do. I got a fresh brew right Just back here. Just grab going. it I mean, then. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I am curious to check okay. that game out and do maybe do some kind of mixed reality footage with that game. I feel like that would be a really cool game to yeah. do that with. So I do want to kind of learn. We're still learning that whole aspect. We don't really know much about it. So, but yeah. I'm surprised nobody <laughs> caught it. I added a little bit of it into the, uh, the No Man's Sky magnetic mount video. And I'm surprised nobody even like on our Discord noticed that or said anything. Yeah. Um, I j- I tried to do it like super subtle, like so you didn't really see it. But right. Yeah. So Steve XM said, "I'm drinking coffee with grass-fed butter, MCT oil, and salt." Are you doing the uh, what is that? Is that legit? Yeah, my wife does that. She does that. That's a it's, thing. Uh, yeah. It's what's oh. that? What's that new fad diet thing that everybody's doing? I don't know what it is this I don't week. Know. It's not the Adkins, but it's kind of like that. It's like a. Uh, I don't know what it's called. But... Weight Watchers for Kids? Did you hear that one? That's hilarious. Oh, no, I haven't heard that. But Weight Watchers released an app for kids. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. Well, Steve Drumheller <laughs> of Conquer Reality just uh, added a dollar ninety nine to your uh, coffee maker fund. He said, you guys rock. Oh, we, we definitely appreciate That's that. Awesome. And we did a temporary animation that was supposed to pop up up here. And I oh, didn't yeah, what see happened? It, so you had that I, working, I thought. Uh, I don't know. Did you make it invisible? No. No, it's there. Nope. Nah, so we still got to talk to Jim Hall about getting a special one made for us. But so we tried to we throw actually had issue temporary, with but... Streamlabs this morning. Yeah, um, that was part update. of the issue with us being late. They updated Streamlabs and totally new UI and everything, and everything was reverted back to old, you know, stream keys and stuff. We had to redo everything last second. Yeah, Luckily, it was we kinda, figured it out. But... It's kind of crazy, but oh, yeah. Rizzle Rock just uh, added some coffee for us too, refilling Man. our coffee cups at dollar ninety nine. Man, we got to get that animation. I'm so bummed it wasn't I at least know. a temporary I thing working up too. here. I don't know what's we going need to on, think. But... I still like. I think we should have yeah, refilling the coffee cup. Oh, there we like go. That. Maybe they're just. So the so it's delayed. So Rizzle, but Jim or uh, Steve Drumheller didn't show up. I didn't see his show up, but oh, maybe because you made it invisible and then brought it back up or something. <laughs> maybe maybe it was glitching out. I'm not sure, but we definitely appreciate that. We appreciate the uh, the coffee fund money. That is uh yeah for sure. It's definitely awesome. So it's crazy, man. I'm burning all my money on uh, magnetic mounts and I yeah. whole box of them. <laughs> True that. True that. So I think we have the timer wrong on here. It's not uh. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so what else? We got a bunch of stuff to get into. We we're like, oh, we don't really have that much for today, and then we ramble on about all kinds of crazy stuff. Know. So, so this is uh. My notes here. This is one interesting game here that uh, I saw this week. Oh and my god. If gosh, we have fun. some, if we have some Tetris fans, <laughs> there is a demo of this actually uh, that you can download. I don't think it's on Steam. I think it's like a uh, IO, it's IO on, uh, or something. Yeah. Yeah, but this is Jello Tetris. So this is basically Jello that you play Tetris <laughs> with. I don't know how else to explain it, but it actually yeah, looks yeah. kind of fun. It actually looks kind of interesting. The The physics of the Jello is what kind of seems kind of cool that you get to play around with this. But so, yeah. I mean, I guess you just pick your blocks. You just pick which ones you want and you uh, throw them in there. I just want this to be multiplayer so I can slap somebody in the face with one of these. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that actually wouldn't be a bad idea to do some kind of multiplayer. I mean, even like Connect 4. You know what I mean? Like, have you ever been to a, uh, like a Dave and Buster's or stuff like that where they right? have the big sure. giant connect four screens, like connect four That's would be an true. awesome game to have in VR as That's a multiplayer true. game. I mean, you could literally, why does Dave and Buster's not have a whole, you know, game VR game thing where people could go right. in together and be like at a Dave and Buster's and you just That's pay to true. pay to download the game. You can play those kind of games together. I think that I would know. be awesome. Actually, it would be cool. But look, I mean, yeah, I just want to slap somebody with one of these. They should have like a, a, a gun game or something with like rubber guns and stuff like yeah. rubber bats and <laughs> oh, dude, it'd be hilarious. there's so much untapped potential in vr there so there's too. still so many things to do and we're gonna Somebody actually talk to about make a vr a game of stuff that everyone did when they were a kid oh yeah like shooting bottle rockets at each other and yeah. like, i mean just ridiculous stuff you know <laughs> go-karts and let me guess we still did that as a adults but you know well, we do have go-karts there are some go-kart <laughs> games but so and uh Jarillo asked if the vanishing realm dlc is any good and we were going to talk about that a little bit but we haven't yeah. played it we haven't checked that out no so. we haven't played it but i, I guess it's, it sounds like it's been pretty good i know some of like the old reviews and stuff were kind of mixed on the game but yeah i mean it yeah. does supposedly it the dlc from what i've heard i'm not i don't know how legit this is but supposedly the dl dlc actually adds more to the original game than what the original game originally had if that makes sure. sense so the dlc is bigger than the original game 
basically. Yep. There's more content in that DLC. So, so yeah, if somebody checks awesome. it out or if somebody in chat has checked it out, feel free to chime in because we have not been in that. So was that a free DLC? I actually didn't even pay attention. I think it is a paid DLC. I do believe. Okay. I do believe it is a, a paid. I mean, DLC. I guess it has that much content. I mean, it's a whole yeah. other game. So yeah. So interesting to see. And talking about the untapped potential of um vr and some of the stuff that you know we want to see that we haven't seen and stuff like that we do have uh one of the co-developers of beat saber has actually put out a little video and we grabbed that today for the show to uh show you guys so i know sometimes some of the smaller developers are in chat and stuff like that and they're actually putting to he's actually this is a personal project he's putting together some funds you know because of their success to help some other people out that he thinks has some really good ideas so yep Let's go ahead and play that real quick if I can find that. Here it is. You have audio to this one? I do, because it's just, if Great. not, it would just be a talking head. So <laughs> we're going to play this. Hey, right guys. Uh, after, after seeing, seeing new, new VR, VR games, games on Gamescom, on Gamescom this, this year, year uh, I, decided I decided that it will be a great, great time, time right now, right now uh, to, uh, to give something back from the success of Beat Saber, Beat Saber what we had recently. recently. Even though Even we are not done, done yet at all, I think... It will be It'll great to put a bunch, bunch of money, money together, together and start, start supporting, supporting uh, new, developers new developers who are uh, creating, uh, creating games, games or applications, or applications for, VR for VR and who are who thinking are a little bit more out of the box. box. Because, because I believe that VR, VR desperately needs, needs new directions, new directions uh, in, in game mechanics and overall uh, approach. Uh, so, so it's it's, it's my it's personal project, project but, but if you would need help and you are a developer who are trying new things, or, or just trying, just trying to, polish to polish the current, current system, system to make it better, better let me know and maybe, maybe I can help. help. See you soon. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. It's just so cool what he's doing. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, I mean, I think he really, I think the focus kind of what he's, he's doing is that he sees that there's a lot of untapped potential in VR and kind of Beat Saber was kind of one of the originators of, you know, that style of game. There's been a lot of things that have come after them, but I mean, when they first came out, they, they did do something different. I mean, that was something different than what we were used to seeing in VR and it kind of blew up. I mean, it took the world by storm and and even to this date, you know, Beat Saber is probably one of the biggest titles in VR. I mean, a lot of people, when you just mention VR, that don't know anything about it. They're like, Oh yeah, I've seen that Beat Saber game. You know what I mean? So it's, it's pretty huge. So I think it's awesome that they're, taken some of the success that they've had and are willing to help out some other people. You know what I mean? So, you know, for me, what I feel what they do all the time is they listen to their community. And I've said this before that the developers who do well with their games are the ones that listen to their community and deliver what the community wants essentially. Um, So every time that there's like a hack come out or sideload something for beat saber and it's big, they implement that into their game. And yes, it takes them, you know, six months behind of maybe when it actually happens right. because of development time. Uh, but they do it. You know, they're not ignoring it or just, you know, trying to stop it or shut it down. They're just like, okay, if that's what you guys like and you're doing, we'll do it for you and put it in game. And then it kind of maybe kills yeah. that side of it. Um, but I mean, they're just doing it for the people because they listen to yeah. the community. And, and that's, even new that's stuff everything. too. They're they're innovating too, as far as like yep. they're doing the 360 tracks. You know where yep. you're going to be moving yep. around. Uh, they're yep. doing the color editor, which I guess the color editor was some mod stuff too that they've listened to that people like. And sure, yeah. So I mean, it's really cool. I think it's awesome. And and that is, you can contact him directly on Twitter if yep. you have something, you have an idea, if you're a developer that you you know you would like some help and. I'm sure they're probably willing to give help other than just financial help too. You know I mean? They, I mean, in the skill sets that they have, you know, if you, yeah. if you're and interested that's kind of a lot of what he said too. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're interested in, in contacting him, get a hold of him on his Twitter, you can send him a direct message, you know, get in contact and see, you know, see what happens. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty cool. So. Yeah. I think that's, I just, yeah. Props to him. You know, they're not just trying to do their own thing and keep everything, you know, in their world. Yeah. You know, I, he, they obviously, know. They know I mean, the problems and tribulations. Of yeah, it, you know? obviously it's not just a big money grab thing. You know what I mean? That's not right. what they're all about. They're, they're, you know, same thing with us and a lot of the other people that are in the VR community is we just want to see it grow. You know, we want to yep. see that innovation happen. We want to see the things that are going to blow our minds in VR. You know I mean? That's the stuff that everybody's looking for. And we've had that. We've had some of that. We want, And we think it can go even further. You know, it's there's so much untapped potential still in VR that we haven't even... I don't think that we've even reached yet, you know, that I just can't wait. I mean, the future is going to be going to be pretty awesome. So next year, 
Yeah. We always keep Maybe. saying next year, but next every year, year just gets bigger and bigger. That's it really why I does, keep yeah. excited for the next year, you know. It really does. Christmas to blow up, hopefully Quest blows up. Then yep. there's more people that have it, drives to more developers, you know, yep. just it's great. For yeah. sure. Super cool. Yep. So yeah. and, and one of the people that have been doing that is Servios. Like Servios as a yeah. studio, I don't even, I mean they they're probably one of the busiest studios. I, know. I mean, we've gotten how many, you know, Drops game them. announcements yeah. just this year, you know, with Battle Wake, uh, the new one that just came out, um, Westworld, you know, the Westworld, Westworld. thing, The yep. Walking Dead with a uh, partnership with AMC, the Westworld was a partnership with HBO. And the nice thing is, is that a lot of times we get these movies and show tie ins and they're super low budget, super not, you know, what we want to see. But sure. Servios is doing it right. You know what I mean? They're, yeah, they're, yeah. They are doing a much better job at this. And yeah, I I haven't played the Westworld game yet. I don't think you have no, either, and I, I do want to get in there. The problem for me is that I don't have HBO, so I've never watched the show. Right, like, right. I, don't, I don't have any yeah. experience with the show, but looking up what the show is about, it seems super interesting. You know, and the trailers look good, and the people that have played this game say that it's really awesome, and it's kind of weird because we got an announcement that they were working on this game, and a couple of days later it launched with, like, I no know. nobody even knew it was coming. Nobody had any idea that that was about to launch that quick, you know? So, which is weird because we've had other games that have been announced that did it drop on Oculus as well? I know it's on Steam. Yeah, I believe it's on both. So maybe they were just delaying because maybe they don't know when it drops on Oculus, and maybe then when they found out, maybe they pushed all their Uh, information out. I think they know. I think they. I mean, Oculus tells them when it's going to come out, and I mean, a lot of times with stuff like that, it's going to be the same day for Steam and Oculus. I think the quest. Yeah, but do you think they tell them up front when it's going to come out? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I think with I think the Quest, because I think uh, the Rift store is a little bit more open where they have more say True. in when it's going to come out. I think it's the Quest store that Oculus basically Good tells point. the developers, your game's going to come out on this date. Whether, yeah. you know, Good there's point. nothing You're you can right. do about it. You know what I mean? I don't think that's the same on the Rift store, but yeah. yeah. But this we do have the trailer for it. We can play that trailer. Because, I mean, this is kind of, not a lot of people are talking about this. I mean, there's been a lot of oh. new stuff, but this is right. this is a pretty new game that is pretty big by a pretty big developer that, you know, I feel like isn't quite getting the attention it deserves. And I do want to get inside. I believe it's a $30 game, I believe. But people say it's, I mean, it's kind of almost next level stuff that they got going yeah. on in this game. So. It does look good, yeah. It yeah, really does. Graphically and just, I mean, it's it's an awesome looking game for sure. Well, and they just keep putting out more polished stuff so then they can transfer all that tech that they have built into VR yeah. and just put it into the next game. You know what I mean? They're not having to start from scratch on everything. So they're lighting, dy- you know, they're dynamic yeah. lighting or whatever. They're, you know, it might be not dynamic, but it does. It's yeah, it's probably baked, but still looks good. So, though. Really so Rizzle good. Rock said it, it's pretty, he said, I have oh, it. Good. It's pretty wild. He said, worth watching the first season before playing. Oh, really? Huh. And he said it did drop on Oculus, too. But I, I wonder if I can get uh, this hmm. show. Uh, is it available anywhere, like uh, as far as Fire Stick or anything like that? I'm curious. to. Uh, if you have the HBO app. But uh, don't you have to have HBO subscription to be able to watch anything on there? I, I believe think you, you just get the to... – well, yeah, you have to have the mo- like the mobile subscription or whatever. Yeah, but... you have to pay them some kind of money, I'm sure. But I do want to yeah, check yeah. that out. And I thought it was pretty in- interesting that – let me see if I can find this here. Uh, I might have forgot to add it. But uh, so Anton, we had Anton Hand on a while back on one of our shows. He was a guest and he actually tweeted out about this game. And that was one of the things that really caught my attention. And let me see if I can find what he So he said, today has me elated. I can count on one hand the number of VR games I've done a first session of and wanted to dive back in. Not just to study, but to actually consume and turn off my author voice and lose myself in. This Westworld game is one. So, so, so rare for me. So that was kind of, cool. that caught my attention. Like, man, I really need to look into this game if it's yeah. if it's that good. You know what I mean? It's coming from him, you know? Well, it must have a lot of content <laughs> from the show too. Not just like right, they based right. it off of it. So it must have content that draws you into something you already like and know. So that's right. really, I mean, that's great. Yeah. And I've heard that's some really people good. say that you can just jump in without watching the show. Oh, I'm sure. Sure, but yeah. I, I kind of want to, just like, you know, Rizzle Rock said, you know, watch the first season and uh, right. I'm going to have to try to figure out how to do that if I need to get the HBO app or something. But it looks like a really cool Probably. show anyways. Uh, from what I hear, the show is pretty good, at least the first season. From what I heard, the first season is pretty uh, pretty good. So yeah. we'll have to check that out. 
but definitely check so, out the game. I mean, it, it, I know. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of going below the radar. It seems like, cause there was no hype. There was no talk about it before, except for a couple days before launch. Then it just came out of nowhere and everybody's like, wait, what, what is this? Like, you it's know? crazy. I know. So, I know. Yeah. It's either we get like promised release dates a year in advance that never happen, or we get a day's notice or something. <laughs> I feel like it's yeah. one or the other. Yep. So that's what Jim Hall said after cutting the cord years ago. If a show isn't on Netflix, Prime, or YouTube, I don't see it. And that's kind of, I mean, yep. I really don't watch much TV. I really don't. Like, I, right. I really don't watch a lot. And if I do, it's usually something on Netflix or Hulu. You know, yep. like, I don't even, I actually have, like, a basic basic cable subscription because it came with the internet package that I have, and it was cheaper to do it that way. But I can't even tell you, I have maybe moved, since moving into this house, I've maybe turned on the cable box one time for probably about five minutes I <laughs> like i, I don't just either. don't watch I don't anything watch you know so nope. yeah i'd rather I don't. i'd rather be playing vr exactly i'd rather put that tv a half inch from my eyeballs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a half inch let's get an eighth inch in there man get it close know, you gotta right? get it close wider field of view man <laughs> it's all about that field inject of view. it right into my eyeball that's right yeah it's coming too <laughs> I, know, I know so speaking of how about those uh lenses oh yeah the lens tech yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool huh crazy i mean it's cool what they're like they're working on and stuff is just gonna get better and smaller and yeah the technology is definitely advanced and this isn't even necessarily uh technology specifically built for vr but it is something that has pretty big vr implications and it's basically a new breakthrough that could revolutionize the design of almost every optical instrument in use today including cameras eyeglasses telescopes all that good stuff but uh the thing that surprised me I'm trying to see where it said is that uh, not only is the instrument capable of focusing in real time, thanks to an elastisimer, elast, elastomer muscle, it features none of the bulk of traditional spherical lens. So the fact that it can Crazy. be, you know, if they can get the real high end lens tech and it'd be really, really small to, I mean, even just depth wise, you know what I mean? Cause the lenses right. in a, yep. yeah, the lenses in a VR headset now are still pretty thick. Right. You know, so, I mean, that should be able to increase field of view right there if nothing else about this technology, you know what I mean, sure. benefits as well. Just that alone is a pretty big the, thing. But the overlay, you know, if, if, I mean, the overlay, there's nothing to it, you know? I mean, so does this change? I mean, obviously, we don't know how the lens tech works exactly, but, you know, right. can you look at it from without adjusting a PD? You know what I mean? Does it have to be dead center? Yeah, I'm You know, sure. because with anything that's got, um, uh, like, a convex shape to it, you actually have to look through it at, you know, the center point to be, to work at optimal, right. you know, that's why you have a PD. And, and um, that's one of the things that they've done is that it's, it is a flat lens tech. Right. So it is that's a flatter lens where it's not as curved and you know what I mean? Where the lenses that we have now are. From the look of this image, I would say it still has to be centered. I will say that just from yeah. the look of it, right. but you know, be cool. If not be yeah. awesome. And I mean, like, I mean, even the article says, you know, it's likely years before any of this, you know, really makes sure. it into products. But I mean, every single aspect of it is advancing the lens aspect, the screen aspect, you know what I mean? All of it is definitely. And I think but VR, honestly, go but, ahead. Um, VR sees lens tech first. A lot of times, you know, we get yeah. those not, you know, initially maybe, you know, you're going to have your high end stuff that has that, but you know, we are the first that start to see some of those things because people are willing to spend more money on a product that focuses on the lenses, you know, yeah. lenses and screens. I mean, that I mean, it makes a big thing. difference, makes a big yep. difference in VR. So people are willing to spend the money, yep. you know, when it comes out. But Absolutely. Pretty uh, cool. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Any advance is good advance. Yeah, for sure. Keep it coming. I know. How about that quest stand that you showed me too? Yeah, that is a, Before you this get is too actually far, a handmade Actually, where is that? So this is actually handmade out of oak wood. And I believe it's for, it'll work for, you know, obviously, I don't, I don't know how many other models they have. I think this is one of their first actual products and is made for the Rift S and the Quest. As you can see in the pictures, you know, the rounded cups are for the controllers to sit into. But it, it, this is one of the nicer looking yeah. stands i've seen i think it just looks really clean it's got a really nice look to it i don't know if we've put that link in the description yet if we haven't we can um, add that in there i don't but, think i have that one in there yet yeah we'll have to add that in there after the show but i believe it sells for around 40 or 50 dollars somewhere around there but i mean it's handmade you know it's just this nice isn't, yeah. this isn't some factory this is somebody that I, is actually making these by hand and selling these so yeah i mean it as far as quality wise, it looks really nice sitting on a shelf. This is going to be a nice showpiece to, uh, yep. to show off your stuff, but it is cool. 
It is pretty. I neat. like anything wood. I mean, I'm a sucker for anything. Yeah, like I that. like wood too. Handmade. Yeah, you know? for sure. Hence I like our... there was that there was that other wood one that was like that wall mountable one. I like that. Yeah, one too. there's been a couple of them. We've showed them on the show. I think yep. there were some other older ones, but this is one that just came out that, and I believe it takes shipping takes a little while because I believe they are made yeah. to order. So I don't think there is a back pile of these things. Basically, you order them and he makes them. You know, I think as it's the a, orders didn't come it say in. two to three weeks. Maybe I think it said two to three I think weeks. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. but it's cool. It is cool looking. It is nice. Yeah. I wonder if you can pick out the wood. Like the dash on my one car, I actually picked it out by like the grain of the wood, yeah, which is super know. cool. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know if you get that in like depth. Color it, but... or yeah. Yeah. You never know. You talk to the guy, email him. You know, they're yeah. usually pretty. Yeah, cool I mean, you it. might be able to, but I know this yeah. one, the one here in the photo, is oak wood. So. That's awesome. It's pretty. Yeah, cool. that's sweet. I know. And while we're on it, there is this. Uh, I think you found this. This is agile VR. This is basically an exoskeleton. Yeah. And this is something they're using for body tracking, basically. So this basically goes on your legs as we're walking for like yeah. motion in the game. Yeah. So basically it tracks your legs <laughs> and your, in a sense, your body by knowing where your leg position is without any external trackers. So you don't have to worry about any occlusion or anything. All of the sensors are built into these basically leg I don't know what you leg exoskeleton <laughs> braces. braces. Yeah. Knee <laughs> braces. I mean, it's basically like a knee brace that can basically track your position and so, yeah, and I think right now it only works with the Rift and the Vive. I think those are the only two that are supported right now. And I believe you can actually order these now. I think they're around $500, but. I, they just need like some motors on the side. So it would be like <laughs> anti-gravity, you know, and maybe yeah. like a lock. So you could bend them halfway down and then just sit. You know, somebody like, like <laughs> somebody kicks you in a game and it like blows your kneecap out. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. Leg sweep and your leg goes yeah, out. You yeah. literally <laughs> fall on your face. <laughs> I don't oh, think that's what they had in mind, but I do oh, like it. Man. I do like the that's, idea. That's but yeah, bad. so this is Agile VR and man. it is available for four ninety nine. dollars Creed. Wouldn't that be amazing? Now. Creed. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Actually, that would be cool. Just these alone in Creed would be really cool. Yeah, to be able to, because uh, I mean, you should be able to do kind of like that simulated walking where you lift your legs. And right. I don't know how much of the software, how much they're right, doing right. with the software. So if that's going to be, you know, capable, if it's just going to be something right now that's like for VR chat, you know what I mean? Where you have legs, which, which everybody wants legs in VR chat. I mean, that's like the biggest thing in VR chat if you go in there. I don't, yes. that's kind of weird, but yeah. <laughs> it gets a little crazy in there sometimes. It does get a little crazy, so. Oh, and you can get custom color straps. You can pick the uh, strap You can, color. yep. That is interesting. Yep. It rotates through. You can get red straps. Yeah, you can get all kinds all of kinds stuff. All kinds of crazy stuff. Yellow, yeah. Pretty cool stuff, though. I mean, yeah, again, just the, the technology advancing. Yeah. It is pretty cool. So, uh, uh, Groundhog Day was another one we were going to talk about. Oh, yeah, Groundhog Day. <laughs> Groundhog Day. <laughs> I can't take Groundhog Day. I can't. Oh, I really can't. Man. It's pretty awesome, though. <laughs> <laughs> So we are probably, I think this is turned down. Yeah, this is turned down a little bit. You might still be able to hear it a little bit, but we're going to talk over it. So the, the I, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty cool. I think it's, it's going to be cool. the, the main thing that, give, like, I'm, I can't honestly say that I'm, like, super interested in this when I heard about it. But the fact that it was made by, uh, what is it, Tequila, Tequila Works, Tequila the same Works, people that yeah. made the Invisible Hour experience. That's what gives this yep. credit to me, you know, because they did an excellent job on that game our experience and this is going to be they, they said it's not really a game or an experience it's kind of like almost being in a film where yep. it's interactive and you do have little puzzles and little yeah, missions like and things you have to do like this yeah so i mean it, and awesome. the people that have tried it i think it was at gamescon and actually gamertag vr if he's still in here he might have tried this there and yeah they said it, the takeaway was that it was a little different and it was kind of weird but it was it had a lot of potential and it was pretty cool sure. so yep it's just kind of a fun, you know, one of those games that you don't have to take serious and, you know, yeah. think too hard about, but it's cool to play through. And yeah. there's a coffee maker in it, man. I can learn how to make some right, serious right. coffee in this. You and, know? and if the Fix story it. is good, you know, they have a lot of voice acting and stuff in here. And sure. if the story is good, I mean, that's what's going to make this game. You know, if it's got a good story, and you know, obviously yeah. it's going to have some comedy and all that stuff in it. And that, I mean, it'd be pretty inter interesting to see what they do with it. It's September 17th. I think that this is supposed to come out. So it's not too far away. September 17th. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh -uh. So I just want to know where it's set because I actually went to Punxsutawney. It's set in Punxsutawney. 
Is it? Well, yeah. there's three Groundhog Days. Did oh, you there know is? that? No. Yeah. So, so Tyler is an on expert on Groundhog Day because he has been I there know. himself. We lived in Pennsylvania, actually. The two of us lived in Pennsylvania for a while. And uh, he, I think I had to work that day and I didn't go, but you did go to the actual Groundhog Day fe- festival that they had. Yeah, I think I left at like, I don't know, three in the morning or something. And uh, it was a couple hour drive still to get there, but it was crazy. Um, and it used to be held in town, but it got so big that they moved it out of town. So where it shows it in the game and stuff isn't where it actually is now. I'm getting technical. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it's it was a lot of fun. Super cool to go to. Uh, we can go to breakfast everywhere. And the craziest part was when I was there is that there were 30,000 people that showed up, right, to see Phil. And uh, once you and see him and Phil stuff, everyone... Phil is the groundhog in case anybody Phil know. is... I don't know who <laughs> Phil is. <laughs> so after everything's done there, it's like, you know, daybreak. Everyone walks downtown. Well, you have to walk through this field and i mean like a farmer's field and we like got going quick because we're like well we want to get first to breakfast there's thirty thousand people here right so we're like flying it's me and two other guys we're walking over these hills and i look back and it was like a scene out of a freaking movie Thirty thousand people rolling like over these hills all walking like a sea of people i'm like this is crazy it looks like literally something out of a movie it was nuts it's crazy, but yeah, it was really cool. A lot of fun. So this, yeah, definitely would bring back some memories. So does that make you want to play this even more? Because oh, you've been to the thing. That's what oh, I figured. Yeah, yeah that's sure. what I figured. It's pretty absolutely neat. without a doubt. Man. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. That is awesome. Oh, yeah. We, I think we did forget to mention when we were talking about Serbios is that Battle Wake is coming out September 10th. We do have the release date for that. Oh yeah. And there has yep. been a Quest version that's been confirmed as well. So Battle Wake is coming to the Quest. I don't think that will be on September 10th, but it is coming. Yeah. So another thing. So, uh, good. Good. I was just going to talk about the new physics system. I don't know. If oh, you, sure. Uh, sure. This yeah, is a, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Everybody's excited about the bone work stuff. And it, it seems like some more people are starting to dabble into this, uh, advanced sure. physics system for VR. And there's even a, uh, demo for the quest that has some physics based stuff. And, uh, paradise decay just did a video of that yesterday. I was watching that. It was pretty cool. And this is, like you said, is uh, Nim, Nim, Somi, Nim Sony. Is that how you say it? Sony. Nim Sony. Sony. Project TX. Yes. Project like TX the company that screwed game Oculus. The final game that I'm making. Getting, getting. Present present so we'll let this play a little bit here. For VR. For VR. you have audio? Yeah, you have audio. Character physics body. body. That interacts interact with everything, everything in the scene, in the scene including, including the feet and everything. everything. So if I sort of walk into this... You can see the feet actually push it along as well. So everything you're seeing, completely physics. Let's switch over to first person view. There's the camera that you were looking at. Hello. Um, let's switch over to first person view and have a look at some of the new interactions that I've been working with. So this system is now getting ready for actually being implemented in a proper game. Uh, and uh, it's sort of much more stable, much more um, interactive and realistic, realistic now, now and accurate, accurate when I look, I look at the actual interactions. interactions. So you can see, you can see I've got a new, got a new grab, grab pause system, system which works, works properly, properly and, I'm, and able I'm able to actually create, create these grab, grab pauses based, based, based on all of the grabby the objects, objects like these like uh, uh, weights, weights over here, here like the like camera over there, the guns over there and these axes. The cool thing is you can move your hands. I mean you move your hands to different grab points like the sliding system that goes along these grabs as well. And of course, you can yeah, that's see awesome. it's a slide. To yeah. person, you can lean these, and on you can your actually rest the object well. on your shoulder, which is pretty yep. cool. You can hit my head, and of course, and of course not only my head, head but, but <laughs> you can actually you can hit, hit the hit table, table and stuff. stuff. And of course, that's a full physics joint as well. So let's so grab let's this. Grab this. <laughs> And take it out, take it out. Have, a look, have a look at it in third person. First off, First off usual, usual business. business. A, gun, a gun, using one hand, and of course the recoil, recoil is going to be going pretty, pretty obvious. obvious. As you can see, pretty, pretty obvious, obvious recoil, recoil there. there. However, However, if I lean this, this on my body, on my body and you can see, yeah, actually we'll just turn that down and talk about it. I'm, Jim Hall said there's some echo, yeah, I'm not sure that what too. that was. But, uh, yeah. but I mean, I feel like this is, so this is something, this is his system that he, built and he is going to be making his own game out of this but i i feel like he's talked about possibly selling this system to this physics-based system once he's created his game for it and but i I feel like this is the direction the things need to go you know i mean the things need to be you need to be able to interact with things like you can in these physics-based systems so i mean like 
we don't know exactly what the game is going to be like yet, but I mean, just looking at the physics based system of what he's done and created so far, it's definitely pretty exciting. And, and a lot yeah. of people there, there's a lot yeah. of hype around this video right now too. And uh, Steve XM was just asking if it's downloadable and it is downloadable. Um, I do have the link for it, but it wouldn't post to chat for some reason. I don't think so. Let me try that again. Yeah. Should post but, chat. But we can add, we will add, uh, like we said, we got a late start this morning and we had some technical yeah, difficulties. So we will add a bunch of links after the show is over. We'll get a bunch of that yeah, stuff yeah. in there. But, but yeah, yep. I mean, this, this is pretty promising. And we still don't know when Boneworks is coming, you know, but a lot of this is how Boneworks is going to mm-hmm. work too. You know, they it's a lot of the same kind of uh, physics systems. They work similarly. You know, there's a lot of similarities sure. between the two. Even this. I think there's one part in the video where he takes the trash can and he throws a bunch of weapons in the trash can. You know, yeah, they, they did that right in here. the bone work yep. stuff. You know, a lot of that stuff is in there, but yeah, it is cool. I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely be fun to get in and try it. It is yeah. downloadable though. Um, but if you just search for, uh, let's see, it's on, I can tell you where it's on. Yeah. It's on itch IO. It okay, is. Yeah. Yep. So it seems to be the hosting. Yeah. For and I actually project. haven't played oh. any, uh, games where it actually has this much physics, built in i mean there are some sure. stuff out there i'm trying to think of uh a couple but not this in depth you know what i mean like uh, the, the bone right. works is the big one that kind of put this kind of stuff on the map for what you know we to expect in the future vr games and like hopefully somebody does just sell these systems so that more people don't have to put as much time into the development of it and it, we can see it in more stuff you know what i mean yep. so yep pretty exciting yeah, it just about helps it. progress vr i mean yeah it's pretty exciting it really stuff does. though I kind of hope that's what Boneworks was going to do with it, truthfully. But sell their yeah, sell their system. Yeah. I'm not sure because yeah, I don't know. I mean, Probably Boneworks. Sh- I, yeah. I know they kind of have their own thing now. I their know. studios get that, that's kind of really helped their studio out quite a bit. I mean, they were already well, pretty sure. popular, you know, YouTubers and stuff like that. But I feel like that has really helped propel their studio onto another level. Sure it has. But, oh yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, so Dirt Rally um, was the other one. Hmm. Kind of had a. Uh, an interesting reply to all their updates. I was a little bit disheartened by it, I guess to say the least. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just to say that they were, you know, going to try and work on it and stuff. And, you know, it wasn't easy just to put the Oculus SDK and stuff into their, you know, VR build and stuff. But, you know, the way they said it, I'm like, they should have been working on this beforehand, like before it dropped, like they, right. they knew all this would have been an issue. So why are they now acting like, yeah, we're going to look into it now and we'll get it at some point, you know, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of that. Yeah, you know, I feel like they're bailing on the VR stuff. Well, I don't think it was but, ever like a super huge focus of, right, you sure. know, what they wanted to do, which I wish it was, you know, I wish it was a lot more of a focus, but I know. I know like, it's such I mean, a good game. No Man's Sky, you know, they had some troubles coming out and stuff too, but they've been doing patch after patch after test. Cool. You know, I mean, they're they're trying to get it all ironed out. I mean, it's definitely a focus for them to get that game working better and working right. Well, whereas sure. Dirt Rally Two, it seems to be not. You know, it's just kind of something on the back burner that they're you know they'll they'll look into it, they'll see, but it's not like utmost. No Man's Sky is updating them. every day almost. Yeah, all the time, all the time. It's crazy. I know. It's awesome. Yeah. Yep, I think I turned the computer on this morning. And it was it, or maybe it was yesterday, and there was another update. Another update, sure. Yeah, I'm sure. So. Uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so, can we talk about that arcade shooter a little? Yeah, uh, we don't really know a whole lot about it, but right. This is what was that called? After, After H. H. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. Yep. Do you have audio of this? No, one? there's no audio. No audio. Okay. So yeah, we're we're not even 100 percent sure if it's strictly an arcade shooter. It is definitely an arcade based. Shooter. Sure like is. they do have that aspect we're not the sure if it's going to be yeah. a actual multiplayer game that comes out just for regular home-based stuff but see for me I, I if i'm going to an arcade to play vr i obviously don't have vr right right so why couldn't you have a vr arcade version and the online and i know it's that's kind of been done but you know you could play together then it would have to be online in the arcade and stuff but somebody could go demo what it's like to have vr in an arcade then you right. know yeah i think that itself would just be awesome and then to be able to play somebody in the real world too you know like say you or i had the game and we had people go into the arcade and wanted to try and play with us on See, the, the, the you know? it would have to be i don't think that would work good for a multiplayer pvp game only for the fact that if you had people at home playing 
you get those people that are so good at the game that the people that are going to the arcade, they just get absolutely demolished. And they're like, I just paid for this experience. It was garbage. I didn't even live for more than two seconds. You know what I mean? So if it was a co-op, if you could do it in a co-op where you're working with people online, I think that would be a better aspect because you know how people are. They, they get in games and they play 24 seven and they just demolish people that are new players. And that, you know, kind of turns a lot of people off sometimes, but I know. Yeah. I still think the best fact is when somebody in a first person teabags somebody. <laughs> you literally have to teabag. Whole new level when real, it's in VR. Real life. Yeah, yeah, whole new level in VR. That's hilarious. You're not pressing a button anymore. Nope. nope. I remember that back from the old Halo days, though. It's like, oh, oh, dude, oh. this guy's Crazy. teabagging me. <laughs> <laughs> this is everybody off. Yeah. I know. That's great. <laughs> it is funny. But, I mean, the game looks pretty cool, so I don't it know does. if it's going to be something yeah, that's going to come to the home stuff, but it's pretty neat. I like first person shooters, so I'll check just about any first person shooter out. I know. And I wonder if they're going to push out that like gun tracking stuff with like the Vive trackers and everything. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I know there was a company, but they like were really like expensive. That. We need like a consumer grade, yep. almost like the the PlayStation uh, controller, the gun stock controller right. for the PlayStation. Uh, we need something like that for the PC, but on another a little level. Nicer. You know what I mean? Yeah, a little, a little higher, better, yeah. higher end, you know, something like that. That Like something the guns for, that like, they use. Sports. Yeah, but something yeah. that's affordable. You know what I mean? Something that's 100 bucks or 150 bucks. You know, something that yeah. everybody can get, but... It's got to be more than that because yeah, if, if it's essentially your tracker, you too, you know, your controller, your tracker, and everything, I mean, you're going to be 200 bucks into it, 250, 300 maybe if it's really nice. Yeah, that's true. It would be cool though. And we also have a Kickstarter that is starting here. I don't know, I'm not sure if it's started yet. This is the VRGO mini locomotion product. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I'm really excited about this. This does have audio. It seems like a really good solution to motion in VR. I don't feel any motion sickness at all. Hi, my name's Joe, and I'm the designer and founder of Viago. At Viago, we design movement input devices for virtual reality. Movement in VR is one of the most enduring problems facing mass adoption. The question that we wanted to answer was, how do you explore virtual worlds without walking into walls or getting sick? Our first product to solve this problem was a Viago chair, a locomotion device that allows for freedom of movement with just a tilt of the user's body. After a successful Kickstarter a few years ago, we're now looking to build upon the technology, and we are proud to announce the Viago Mini. The Viago Mini Viago is a beautifully designed design compact, compact version of the Viago chair. It uses the, use the same, same wireless tilt to move technology, technology, but with an enhancement. The Viago, Viago Mini also has haptic, haptic feedback. feedback. To do that, do we've that, incorporated we've powerful motors, motors that will really give you a kick. Something that really surprised me, which I actually really like, is that it has haptics in the seat. So when you were shooting or something scary or dangerous came, it was like vibrating, shaking. It really felt like you were there. This extrasensory experience, combined with a highly accurate locomotion function, delivers a new sensory experience, improving your immersion in VR. The movement part of the device works by gently tilting in the direction you're moving. The further you tilt, the faster you move. It made your whole body feel present, other than sort of just your, your head or your eyes observing something. It felt like you were moving Yeah, Sean, you gotta turn down your headphones or something. You're echoing. Experience. It's designed for people that prefer to play VR. Mute yourself. The Mini has thick cushioning so you can stay in the metaverse for longer. It's lightweight and portable, so you can take your VR experience with you wherever you go. The VR Game Mini can be used on any chair type in the home, and it's easy to store. I think this has a lot of potential for uh, home-based systems. It doesn't require as much space as something where you have to get up and walk around, but you still get that experience of motion, which you don't get if you're just sitting on a normal chair in front of a computer. It's completely wireless, and the accurate motion sensors deliver the precision of the gamepad. It also has a very low latency, making it the best solution for people that get motion sick when moving throughout virtual environments. It was significantly more sensitive than I was expecting it to be able to be. I have a hard time being nauseous in VR, and this is actually really nice because I remind myself that I was sitting down. So I, I got to focus a lot more on the game. The device is hands-free, so you don't have to think about using a thumbstick, and frees up your fingers for hand gesture devices such as the Valve Index controllers. The device works with almost every headset on the market and has a configurable application so you can adjust the Viago Mini to suit your input requirements. Using it was really intuitive, I didn't need to think, I just sat down and felt that I could move around. It was, it was really simple. It works with hundreds of games and we have tools. Do you have it playing double? I don't know. Shouldn't, but I'm not sure what's going on. We'll have to yeah. figure that something probably with the Streamlabs update that updated and something's going on funky. But, but it, it is a pretty cool little product. That uh, I mean, for me, like the, well, the first thing I thought of was No Man's Sky. 
because sure, sure. I, cause I yeah, like yeah. to play No Man's Sky now sitting down. You know, yep. if you put this in the chair with the arms, you know what I mean, on the chair, then you could, you know, as far as getting up to walk around after you get out of your ship, you know, you could just move sure, around like that. There. And it, it's still kind of a weird, like, I kind of like the thumbstick movement, you know what I mean? So right, I don't know I how do well I would enjoy something like this. I guess it makes more sense for the people that are that are new to VR, but... Well, like T Dub said, isn't this the rudder control? Right. Which, right. You know, On but your butt. and it sort of yeah, and it sort <laughs> yeah. of is. Except I don't know. To me, this might feel a little more natural than the rudder control. I don't know why. Like I feel like because you just lean, yeah. you know, um, to where the rudder to me doesn't feel maybe wouldn't be as natural. I don't know. Yeah, it's and still it has different. haptic I mean, feedback. I would actually like to try this one though. Yeah, yeah, and it has haptic feedback, which might be pretty cool for right. for certain sure you know certain games and certain experiences. It might be kind of neat. Yeah, I get, yeah. Right. Could you imagine like dirt rally or something with yeah. the vibration of like the stones or like the gravel? Yeah, but how would that? that would you cool. would almost have because you couldn't use it for locomotion in dirt rally. Like you would almost just have to uh, right. use it for the haptic feedback, which might be kind of cool. Just like uh, the VR man, you know, has all those uh, the stuff yeah. that he's been putting on his racing seat. The actu- not the actuators, but the uh, basically like the rumble stuff for his seat. Right. You know, it works that off the sound cool. frequency. Yeah, and he so said it works awesome. really good now yeah, too. Yeah, he said it's awesome. Which is crazy. That's Definitely awesome. I wonder, that I wonder if it works in other stuff, too, where you have to program it for each game. I'm not sure. I havenven't asked him that. Yeah, I'm curious I'm about sure. that. But. That's crazy. So the Jason Rubin stuff, have you been following this? Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, a little bit. You're talking about with the uh, the fact that Sony bought, uh, yeah. what is it, Insomniac? Yep, Insomniac game, yeah. yeah. So he said, basically, we're happy for him and congratulations and all that stuff. I think it's kind of, I mean... I mean, what else are you going to say? Right, I right, mean, right. You're still working with them. You know, you yeah. can't say, yeah, this sucks for us or we're not too excited about it. But yeah, you're not yeah. going to come I out mean, and say that publicly. You know, obviously, no matter what, you're going to come out and publicly say, you know, we're happy for them. It's awesome. You know, right. But yeah, I yeah, don't know I mean, what implications just, that really means for Oculus. It's hard to say, but uh, we know we're getting Stormland still. Stormland is the last project. That's what it means. <laughs> yeah, pro- fr- from them. Well, he also right. said that you know where that we have so many, we have a ton of upcoming Tommy. announcements that we can't wait to make or whatever. So we'll be interested right. to see what those are. That he's that, just trying to hype their own stuff, then you know, yeah. and that's that, that's good. You know, I mean, you got you to want right? people to be scared. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But and yeah, I mean, it's. OC six isn't far away. So right. Know, they, right. I mean, I'm cool. sure they do have announcements. I don't know how many of those are big game announcements. I don't know about that, but I'm sure they will have some big announcements. I would think, but I, I just feel like their announcements though, are either too premature or they take yeah. so long to work on some of their big projects like that. Like still Stormlands, really? Yeah. Like it's where still is not it? Out yet. Yeah. I mean, even I the mean, quest, you know, we, I mean, it was Santa Cruz back in the day and it was, I mean, we heard about that for a long, long time before we ever actually saw a product, which I is kind of frustrating in a sense because it's nice to find out about this great new product. You have all this hype around it and then it comes out in three months. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. would be ideal because the hype is so huge that, you know, you can ride that hype wave until you're able to release the product. And that, I feel like that helps out a lot. People lose interest. They lose faith in something like that. Yeah. You know, when something doesn't deliver what they say or it takes too long, drags out. But maybe they're just saving Stormlands for holiday release. Yeah, it is holiday release. That's what they've said. Is that I Stormlands mean, yeah, but they've holiday. said it's going to come out for how long now, you know? I yeah, mean, I don't know. I mean, I think that is going to be a big one for, like we talked about earlier, you know, the hype of something big coming out for the holiday that's going to sell, you know, And that hardware. might be the one. Yeah. And it could be. I mean, that's going to be. I mean, there's no sense releasing it right now. I mean, No Man's right. Sky is taking up so many people's time, which, I mean, Stormlands to me is still going to be. That's going to be. I mean, that's. Sure. That would definitely probably. I would play. I mean, if Stormlands came out, I think that would pull a lot of people out of No Man's sure. Sky to at least experience it. And then they would go with whichever one, you know, they yeah. enjoy more. But it's probably not the best time right now to release it. I think the holiday season is the right time to release that game because it so is what such a huge game. What if for holiday, instead of discounting like a headset, they just bundled Bundle. that with it? You know, yeah. like the Rift S, you got, you know, that game free. And for everyone else, it was, you know, 40 bucks or 50, whatever. I don't know what they're going to release it as. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that I mean, could I, work. Think, I mean, it yeah, could I mean, work. Do you think they're going to mark it up more than what they normally do? The game itself? Yeah, or you think it'll be cheap? Because we've had some stuff come out, like, okay, like Defector was cheaper than I actually thought it was It was 20 gonna bucks, be. yeah. Right, I thought it would be twenty nine. I, mean, I thought it'd be thirty nine. I thought it was right. going to be a thirty nine. Oh, thirty nine. Yeah, because that's what a lot of the big right. titles are for VR. I mean, a lot of the, other than Dirt Rally two point that was a sixty dollar right. game. Most of the big VR titles are thirty nine ninety nine. So that's what I assume. But wasn't like a 
full size. I mean, I mean that it, was still a big game. That, was, that game was hyped for a long time, and there was a I lot. Know, I mean, there, really, I there was a lot of excitement around that game until they announced the twenty dollars price, and then everybody right. was like, "Wait a minute, what? Like, maybe right. this game that isn't as big them. as we all thought it was going to be." You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, yeah, which I don't is know. too bad for them because they probably could have charged more. They probably could have, but they probably could have. Yeah, I mean. I mean, I'd rather buy a $20 game than a $40 game. Oh, I'm not game, complaining. But, yeah, and it was an awesome game. I actually haven't played it all the way through yet. I was playing it some, and then I got into No Man's Sky and stuff, and I haven't been back into it. But it's fun. I mean, it's, it is a lot of fun. But I know. Some of some of our uh, our guys from our Discord and stuff and on Steam and guys I play with, I see them. They're popping in and out of No Man's Sky now, and I'm like, oh, I want to go. I want to join them. It's bad. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Now what are you reading? I always see you reading something. I, I always know reading. you're up to no good. Fluke Rogi says, I have a butt kicker, and that works really well in No Man's Sky. So you might have really? to go get one of those. In no Man. Oh, that's cool. I Steve. wonder if, like, so, like, even, like, in the ship and stuff, like, or is it just, like, is it all the time? Would it get annoying? I don't know. Yeah, I'm that not would sure. Be cool. yeah, I'm sure you could program it differently, too, but... Probably and and Steve Drumheller of Conquer Reality asked if anyone is going to OC6, which unfortunately we are not going to OC6 this year. We're maybe, not? Maybe, I mean, we can. <laughs> we can uh, We can maybe arrange that, but I don't think I mean, we're going we this could, year. Maybe next year. But We could close the coffee shop down for a couple days. Yeah, I mean, we could hire some Come help on. to run this place while we're, exactly. uh, while we're away. But <laughs> Steve Drumheller and, uh, said he'd fill in any time. Yeah, we could get him in our coffee shop yep. for sure. So uh, Chris Gould said, except... Uh, or what did he say? So somebody was saying, uh, oh, here it is. He said, OC6, my prediction, no PC VR announcement, mobile focus. So, and that could be. I don't know. I still hope yeah. to see, I'm still hoping to see more of the Half Dome. I hope to see more of the technology that the, the higher end technology that they're working yeah. on, but I don't, I don't know that know. we will. Yeah. And I mean, I know I've... the focus, their mobile platform, like the quest and stuff is their big sure. focus. I mean, that's their, that's going to be their biggest moneymaker. I think for yeah. a while is the, the sales of the quest and people picking that sure. up. And, and I mean, I do love the quest. I'm excited to see some more quest stuff. Cause I love my quest. I think, you know, especially getting red matter on there, getting time. That's stall. what I was going to say. I mean, what they're starting to look like now on there is yeah. what's impressed. That's what's drawing me even more to it. Yeah, I mean, it's an impressive, it's an impressive piece of tech for sure, and I love it. But I, nope. it still doesn't replace PC VR. I mean, you're not going to get the same, obviously, the same stuff you get on PC VR. You know, the Stormlands. Yep. You know, even Dirt Rally. You know, stuff like that. I mean, it's just. I mean, the PC has a hard time running that stuff. You know sure. what I mean? So. But it, I'm still excited. I'd, I'd love to see some new. Uh, and I think the Quest 2 is really going to be impressive. What they've achieved with the first Quest, you know, what they'll be able to achieve with the Quest 2, you know, a couple years down the road or whatever is going to be, it's going to be impressive. So every time like Connect comes around too, I'm always like pumped because I, we're like, okay, they're so close to this. Something's going to drop. We're going to get yeah. big information on this and it never happens. But usually when I go in thinking nothing's going to happen, we usually get something out of it. So I'm hoping that You're just gonna keep by not thinking out there's something yeah. coming, that yeah. something big is going to happen. But I don't, you know. I wonder if... Valve, I don't know. <laughs> you think Valve will do anything this year? Oh, that would be Because epic. it was F8 that they basically dropped all of their stuff about the Valve Index. I mean, Valve yep. definitely likes trolling Facebook a little bit. So, you know, maybe so, they'll... Maybe something big will come out of Valve for uh, the same time. Yeah, yeah, Whoa, maybe all that. Could you imagine? Yeah. Oh man, bro. Oh, so really, I'd be so good. I'd be so it, pumped. Yeah. So even Oculus uh, isn't everything we need to be excited about for OC6. Yeah. There could be other stuff. We don't know. I mean, there could. Yeah. True. We, maybe uh, Cosmos will release another rotating video or something. Yeah. <laughs> Get the hype train really rolling. <laughs> Give us so much information on that oh, thing. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that information is just trickling oh, no. out of there, man. Yeah, oh, they're, geez. They're milking so what happened? Do you think that? Do you think they're like bailing on it or like restarting after like? All the hate they probably got. I don't know. I, don't I just know. think they need a new marketing department. I think their marketing department is terrible. Like, or I do you think it's like developing? Like it's that slow form? Or do you think they ran into more troubles than they thought or couldn't sign I mean, they up might have because or... even when we saw that rotating video, you know, when all that stuff dropped, <laughs> they, they, they did change quite a bit though. They added more cameras. Like they changed right, quite right. a bit from what we originally saw of what it was going to be like. So maybe there's, they're not, they don't even have a final solution yet. Maybe they don't have a final product that they are set on. I have no idea what's going on there. It's really weird. And like the reverb, what the reverb kind of died. You know, I know they had all those technical issues and stuff. Well, and the reverb's back up. Supposedly you can buy it again, up, but, but it, the hype train is gone for the reverb. That's what I mean. I mean it's they, like if they, they, kill, lost if they the don't hype. kill it out of the gate, it's yeah, like it's you, over for them, you know? You and to. that's a great headset, but it's just it's kills It's just got it, too many know? technical issues. Now, I think somebody said that they ran in, that they 
the supposedly the problem was the cord and that was why so many people were having so many issues oh, right. but but yeah. no i don't know i mean there was a lot of screen issues and yeah i don't yep. know i think that hype train has probably left them i don't know what yeah Jarillo said everyone's talking about the uh psvr stuff the psvr2 specifically yeah. And yeah, they are. I mean, I think with consoles specifically, everyone's always talking about the next, you know, the PS5 or the, you know, PSVR 2. They're always on to the next one, you know, and, and as we were when we were into Xbox and stuff. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think it is going to be interesting what they do. You know, we've seen some patents and stuff come out for what they may be using and, and all that. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think PSVR 2 is going to be a serious competitor. I think I Sony too. has taken VR a lot more seriously than a lot of other companies. And I think it is going to work out in their benefit in the long run. My uh, problem though, they always come out with janky controllers all the time. Well, like, the problem is with the, the, they used an old design for, I mean, they just kind of botched the PSVR one together. You know I mean? They were using move controllers that were already out previous to a PlayStation VR. No, but they use those move control. Those move controllers were horrible since the day they came out. You well, know as I mean? long as they become, as long as they can get a better design for that, I think that's going to be, you know, if they, they, they got to do something better than that. I'd they buy the whole to. setup. If they had yeah. great controllers or something and the tracking, and which not just a, I'm sure we're going to get better tracking. Yeah. Well, right. Sure. Yeah. I mean, everything's yeah. getting better on tracking, but yeah, yeah, it's just the controllers kill it for me. Controllers are half of it for me. Yeah. It really is. You know, it's, I don't know. Yeah. It's a lot. Know. I mean, we'll a lot see. of it at least. Yep. And, and, high, then, we'll, and then we'll have vision. our Rift S on the Xbox. So it'll be, yes, it'll be will. interesting to see how the uh, Rift S on the Xbox competes with the PS5. What if, what if that's PS4, the draw? PS5. What if, what if that's connect? Oh, maybe. Hey, that could happen. I mean, could be. like we talked about on one of the other shows, I mean, inside sources drop, say man. that it is coming for whatever the back behind the scenes stuff is going on. They say I mean, that it's coming. I don't know. We'll have to see. Could you imagine on stage in front of all those, you know, developers and press and everything dropping that info? Oh yeah. my gosh, they would go nuts. That would be, That'd be I awesome. I can't even imagine. Be that would epic. be insane. Uh, that would be like so one the, of those. A new Xbox, Xbox is Halo supposed moments. to come out next year, right? Scorpio? I think Scar- it's supposed to come uh, out next year. Or Scorpio, Scar- yeah. Scorpio. Scarlet, Scorp- Scarlet, Scarlet, Scarlet. Scar- I know, I was forgetting. I can't remember. It's one of those, but I'm pretty sure that comes out next year. So it would be perfect timing. Yeah. I mean, it would be would perfect be. timing. I don't know that that's going to happen, but hey, if it does, <sighs> you heard it here first. That would be it, man. That <laughs> we would called be it, it OC6 announcement for Xbox and, and Rift S. It's coming. Perfect. I'm telling you, there's going to be a big drop. There's going to be something. Because no, you said you're, was... you're not hyping it at all. That, that, that way something big will happen. So don't get excited. Right. I'll just be quiet. We won't tell everybody <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> so awesome. we will see. But I think that's pretty much, I think we pretty much covered all of our topics for today. And next week, uh, possibly, we don't know yet for sure, no details yet, but we may have two shows next week. We may have our normal Coffee oh, yeah. VR morning show. And we may have an additional uh, segment yep. in the evening, depending on if everything works out. So keep an eye out for that. We will uh, yeah. keep you updated, but... That'll be a good one. Yeah. If that works out the way we plan, then uh, it'll be pretty, pretty awesome. So yep. we will keep you informed on that. We should be back normal time next Saturday for our morning show and then possibly yep. a bonus segment. Yep. So. And definitely join our discord. There's a lot, we get information dropped in there all the time. Cause we yeah. have, you know, guys in our discord that we're, we're friends with now and stuff. Uh, but they push some really cool information out on there and tips and tricks and stuff, stuff that we even, you know, we, we can't hit everything. Yeah, we can't play right. every game. We can't do all of it. Um, and I want to call them ambassadors, I guess, but guys on our discord, man, they're just dropping some really cool information on there and stuff. So definitely keep an eye out for there. For sure. Um, if you think you liked a little bit of this, we definitely appreciate you hitting the like button. That's for sure. And subscribe. And we appreciate the super chats today. We had a couple, uh, people helping to fill our coffee pot, which is definitely appreciated. We really appreciate that. So I got like one sip left and we got to get that information. Um, what we want to do with the animation type stuff, because Jim Hall said on there, just DM him. So we'll definitely have to do that because I definitely want that to happen. Yeah, for sure. So, yep. All right. Well, we definitely appreciate you being here and we will see you next weekend for hopefully two shows. Yep, good drink coffee with you guys, and uh, we'll see you in VR, right? Yep. No, we'll see you in No Man's Sky. <laughs> <laughs> Later, <Right>? everybody. <laughs> see you guys. See ya. Later.